Right, hello everyone, Joe from Starling Cycles here. Uh, back again to talk about you know, some interesting stuff going on at Starling Cycles. Um, the big news we've kind of put out recently is our carbon fibre prototype bicycle frame. Starling makes steel bikes. It's the obvious thing, a lot of people will say, why, why, are, we making a, why are we making a carbon bike? Um, my, my background before I started Starling Cycles, I was an aerospace engineer. A lot of my time was spent uh, doing carbon fibre R&D, developing mostly new analysis methods, but also new structure for aircraft in carbon fibre. Um, I spent quite a lot of my time at the National Composite Centre in, in Bristol, where I was, I was technical lead for GKN. Uh, and we were developing yeah, new analysis methods, we were developing some new aircraft, some laminar flow wings, all, all to do with carbon fibre. So I, I have a background in carbon fibre. Um, a little while ago, one of my old colleagues from uh, the NCC contacted me saying they are working on a project to develop a new manufacturing process for carbon fibre that would be very applicable to bikes. And what, would I be interested in being the, uh, the bike part of the partner of the project? And I thought, yeah, sounds fantastic. I'd, lo I'd love to be involved. So a government funded project to try and develop a new manufacturing process for carbon fibre frames. The, the thinking being it, it brings manufacture back to the UK. Um, you know, it's hopefully clever and novel. And there's also lots of environmental benefits of, of this manufacturing process compared to existing epoxy frames. Um, so the tricky thing is I can't tell you that much about what the technology is because it's still relatively new or it's, it's all new novel stuff. There's no IP protection. Um, if I tell you what it is, I give away all my ideas and that's, that's no good. But in, in, in summary, we're going to use separate lugs and uh, carbon fibre tubes that are all put together in a very clever way that makes, makes the assembly quick, cheap, uh, higher quality, all the things that you're after when you're trying to achieve something. Uh, people say, you know, what is it, time cost quality, pick two. I think in this case, what we're coming up with, if, if it works out, gives you all three of these things. So it's a very, a very, you know, there's lots of opportunities. It's a really exciting thing to be working on. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the tubes. The tubes are uh, braided thermoplastic. So essentially the, the carbon fiber is woven and then the matrix is thermoplastic, so it's nylon, rather than most carbon fiber at the moment is epoxy. So it's uh, an epoxy. The difference between nylon thermoplastic and epoxy is the nylon is much tougher. Although it's not necessarily quite as strong, it's a lot tougher. It can take impact damage a lot better. One of the things that drives the sizing and the strength of a carbon fiber bike is its impact resistance. You have to make, you know, it doesn't matter if your epoxy is stronger, if you have to use more of it to take impact resistance, then it makes the overall solution heavier and it makes it less efficient. The epoxy can take the impact damage. Um, there's a thing you get in carbon fiber where if you, where if you, whack, a, if you whack the tube, there might be a tiny little scratch on the outside, but internally all the fibres have moved apart, all the, the lamina have failed and moved around. So that loses all its strength, but you can't see anything. You don't get that with a, a thermoplastic because the thermoplastic is more ductile, it absorbs the energy. You don't get that, that cracking, that failure of the matrix as much. So braided carbon fibre tubes and then some very clever, novel carbon fibre lugs. Um, we did make a bike with carbon fiber lugs, but it didn't quite it didn't quite get what we were after. This bike is actually made using some three D printed lugs. Um, Seventy six designs helped us manufacture them, uh, really to get to show the mock up. But following on from the project to make this bike, I've been working on some further stuff, and we've pushed this technology a lot further, and we're getting much closer to a to a, a, a proper solution. Um, but there's still work to do. You know, th this this bike. Is a vessel for looking at a manufacturing process. It may become a bike some point down the line, but it's, it's not going to happen anytime soon. But it's just exciting. It's been a really exciting thing to work on. Um, I can tell you about some of the details of the bike, which is other than the carbon fiber stuff, which is interesting. Um, it's an e-bike, first of all. So it's got a 
a, um, a motor from Freeflow Technologies based, based in the UK. So I've been working with them on a, a steel e-bike as well and then it formed part of this project here. Um, there's been, <laughs> this, this bike went on uh, various, we did a press release um, yesterday and it's gone out to everybody and uh, lots of comments going oh my god people have put the drivetrain on the wrong side we, we didn't do that we're not we're not we're not that stupid this is actually a jack shaft solution so the chain drives on the left up to a cog on this side so this shaft rotates and then that drives back to the chain this side if you have a look at my stern downhill bike on the website that explains how the whole thing works um, if we built it with the chain backwards, that would have been a bit rubbish. We would have been a bit. So, e-bike with a jack shaft system. The battery fits in the down tube. It's quite a long down tube, so with the right battery configuration, we can get we can get a big size battery in there. Um, and also thinking of the time scales of when this is going to be ready. Battery technology is is it's getting smaller and more capacity as time goes on. Probably by the time this becomes a reality, you will have a plenty big enough battery in this down tube. Um, it's a carbon front triangle with a steel swing arm. I, I still believe the carbon is good. It's this, this uh, thermoplastic, in fact, I'll talk a bit more about the thermoplastic in a minute. Um, the thermoplastic gives you all you need for your front triangle, but to get the compliance, the thing we like in the, the steel bikes is the give, the bit of life that the steel gives. The, the swing arm is where you get that from. The, the, the compliance in the, the swing arm, the steel, gives it that lively ride. So I wanted to maintain a steel, um, a steel swing arm on the bike. The, the whole motor casing here is aluminium. That's just because it was too complex to consider making that out of carbon fiber for this project. If this became a production bike, this, this whole area would be, um, would be um, carbon fibre. A few people have commented that the welding is really crappy on the, the motor casing. Yes, it is. We had massive problems with the casting. The casting was firing out rubbish. That meant the welding didn't work, but it doesn't matter. That's not part of the project. It was the carbon we were looking at. So, you know, you don't need to comment and say, that's crap, it's going to break. It, it would, but it doesn't matter. Um, what else can I talk about? So if we talk, talk a bit more about the, the thermoplastic. So the, the benefits of the thermoplastic are um, it takes less energy to manufacture. So an epoxy needs to be cured up to whatever, 200, 220 degrees for a long period of time. That's a lot of energy going into a big autoclave to essentially cook the epoxy and go through the chemical reaction to make it, to make it good for the end product. The nylon just needs to be melted, so you can take it up to a lower temperature for a shorter period of time. Overall, the, the net effect of the energy to manufacture the frame is much lower. Um, we did a, a life cycle analysis with the NCC, and it was showing 25% less energy um, to manufacture the frame compared to epoxy. I can't, unfortunately, I can't publish that, that life cycle analysis because it needs to be peer reviewed. We're, we're going through that process now, hopefully, um, and then I can let that data out. Um, so it's lower energy to manufacture, it's tougher, we've talked about that, the nylon absorbs energy better so hopefully it doesn't get damaged as easily which means the, the frame will last longer. To me, swapping your bike out every year is, is not sustainable for the environment. What we want is a bike that lasts a long time, you know, it's, it's tough, it's durable. Part of that as well is it can be repaired, the, the thermoplastic actually helps to allow us to, to repair it. We're looking at ways of um, being able to send the frame back to the manufacturer and putting it back into the tooling and repair it back to its original state um, or perhaps some more kind of local repair. So it's tougher, it's lower energy to manufacture, um, it's potentially more repairable. It is actually more recyclable, but I, I'm not gonna use the word recyclable. To me, recycling is when you start with something, you take it to the end of its life, and then you can take it back to the start again. So for my steel bikes, we can manufacture a steel bike, ride it for 20 years, and then that steel can go back into the, the steel cycle, you can take it to the scrapyard, they'll melt it down, it can become another steel bike. That is recycling, that can go on forever. Um, Recycling plastic bottles are not recyclable. They, they can only go through about three or four cycles before the properties have degraded and they no longer, you have, so when they're producing bottles, they have to keep adding virgin material. So I think this word recyclable gets used incorrectly. So 
this bike isn't recyclable. It, you, you can't take the carbon fiber, you can't take the nylon, and you can't take them back to their original state and build them back into this frame again. But you can, you could theoretically with energy melt the nylon out and reuse it and get the fibers out, which you could chop down and use in a, in using a lower grade carbon fiber product, sort of chopped strand fiber. Um, but what you could do is when the frame reaches the end of its life, you could chop out the top tube and insert a new one. Or you could chop out the top tube and cut it into small pieces and turn it into a mudguard. Or you could use that bit of the tube and turn it into a kid's bike. So the fact the nylon can be remelted and reformed means there are opportunities for reusing it, not recycling it, but reusing it for a slightly different product, but continuing the use of that material. Much more than you can with epoxy. There's, as much as people say you can recycle epoxy, you just cannot recycle epoxy composites. You can chop it down, it generally gets used as filler. Uh, people have made, there's a few companies making, I don't know, like uh, tire levers out of it. It's all, it's, it's just not true, <laughs> it's just not true. So, you know, let's try and make it tough in the first place. That's what I believe is, that's what I believe is important. So one, one of the other things with the, the manufacturing process we're, process we're looking at is that it actually enables you to inspect inspect the parts as they're manufactured. So currently the way they make carbon fiber bikes or most carbon fiber bikes are made is somebody hand lays strips of carbon fiber into a, into a tool um, and then it's kind of closed up and they hope it all goes together properly and then they, don't, they can't really inspect it afterwards and then it gets shipped off and there's lots of, there's lots of failures. The, the manufacturing scrap rate is massive on some, on some products. I've heard some companies saying up to 50% scrap rate. So all, all the photos of carbon bikes in the sea, that's of frames that have failed or have, have not got through the manufacturing process correctly. A bag has blown or various other things have gone wrong. Um, so the process we're looking at will be um, much more inspectable. We can, we can make sure that everything is correct before it becomes the, the final bike. I can't give any details on that because that's kind of the, the clever bit. But, um, and... and Hopefully the, the, the quality, the braided tubes especially, um, we know that the way the material is laid down is, is very good. So there's lots of bike companies have shown cross sections of their frames where they've cut through the carbon fiber. I won't name anyone in particular, but I look at those cross sections and all, all I can see is waviness and, and resin pocket or resin rich areas and kind of bubbles and it's not very high quality. It's, it's fit for purpose, but when I was looking at carbon uh, aerospace stuff, it's not equivalent to that. These tubes, because of the way they're manufactured, we can guarantee that everything is doing what it's supposed to do. It's much higher quality. So I kind of talked a bit about the, the carbon fiber, a bit about the bike. Where, where does this go next? It's a, it's a research project looking at, looking at the manufacturing process. It, it may become a bike down the line. You know, I think it looks like a beautiful bike. I think I'd want one if I had an e-bike. I think this would be one I would like. Um, it, it is a lovely looking thing, um, but the focus is on getting the manufacturing process right. Uh, I've had a little bit more funding to develop, do a kind of paper study. So we've, we've done some sensitivity studies. We've looked at various options. We're, we're getting much closer to, a, to what the solution might be. Um, going forwards, I need money, I suppose. So I need to find ways to find some money to progress this and, and move it forward. Um, but it's exciting, you know, even if it doesn't come to anything, it's, it's, it's exciting for us at Starling Cycles to work on these projects. We learn lots of stuff. You know, I like telling you all about it. It's interesting. Um, yeah, good fun, really.